This week on The Swing, we talked to Cheryl Davis about her research on Post Secret. Melissa Kansky talks to us about the Elon School relocating. Actor Adam Kaplan joins us to talk about his role in the latest Elon production, She Loves Me. Will Brummett explains his new position as the Pendulum Student Body Representative. And Cassandra Kloos gives us this week's News in Brief. Hello and welcome to The Swing. I'm Brittany Lloyd-Jones. Throughout winter term, you may have seen signs around campus encouraging students to submit their secrets to the pendulum. Well, this week we published those secrets in a spread resembling the increasingly popular Post Secrets series. Here with us today is multimedia editor Cheryl Davis, who wrote an in-depth article about the implications of anonymously sharing secrets with the world. Hi Cheryl, thanks for joining us today. No problem, I'm glad we can talk about it. Yeah, well let me know, tell me about the Post Secrets, what exactly it is nationally, and how it was brought to Elon's campus. Post Secret was started in 2004 by Frank Warren, and he originally just asked people to send in a postcard just with their secret on it. It can be really anything the person wants it to be. And it quickly evolved into um, a business for him, mm -hmm. and now he publishes secrets um, every Sunday on his blog. Mm -hmm. He's created several books from it, he's toured from it, and he launched a phone app with it. So it was brought to Elon because um, with the popularity of it, all these kind of offsprings have come up from it. And the pendulum did a spread about three years ago um, in, to do um, with Post Secret on Elon's campus. And it's a great way to see what's going on in students' lives. Mm. So you did an extensive amount of research for I this. Did. And what did you find most interesting? Mm -hmm. Well, I really went into it very open-ended. I didn't know what I was going to discover. Um, and I kind of morphed the story around um, being on emotional health and how, as students, are we getting support. Um, emotional health can kind of sound scary. People might think it's necessary, like depression, but it really can be anything with how you're dealing with stress, how you're dealing with relationships in your life. Mm -hmm. So I talked to a bunch of students um, who either supported or did not support Post Secret and what they thought um, would be the benefits and would be the negative side effects of it. So what were some of these positives and negatives that you found or that the students found from Post Secrets, that, especially with the fact that it's anonymous? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the most obvious um, positive of it is that it is anonymous, so people can be very truthful. Mm -hmm. um, it does have you, it gives you the opportunity to be able to reveal what you're really thinking. Um, the most, I would say the biggest negative side effect, though, is whether or not sending your secret in for you know, millions of people online to read it is really giving you the support that you need, and it's really giving you the ability um, to branch out to other people. Because I think the key reason that um, Post Secret is successful is its ability to bring people together. Oh, yeah, no, that is such a nice factor. Well, thank you so much for coming in and sharing this with us today. It sounds like you've got a great response and support system from Elon's campus with this new Post Secret at Elon. Thank you. I hope everyone enjoys the story. The Elon School, a local high school run by Elon Homes and Schools for Children, will close its facilities at the end of this academic year for lack of funding. News editor Melissa Kansky recently spoke with the organization's president, Fred Gross, and is here with us now to talk about her front page story. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me here today. Oh, it's great. Can you tell us a little bit about your story, the research you did, and what currently the Elon School is undergoing? Okay. Uh, the Elon School is adjacent to Elon University, so that's why we thought it was of interest to the student body and the local community. And um, Elon Homes and Schools for Children has owned that facility since the early 1900s and originated as an orphanage. And then due to, um, I guess, the change in interest of the community and needs of the community, it changed its functionality and in 2007 it became an independent high school. Wow. But now um, the Elon Homes and Schools for Children organization um, or orchestrates foster programs throughout the school of North, throughout the state of North Carolina. And so in order to increase revenue to fund those programs, they're going to lease the current facility at this independent high school. Oh, wow. So uh, in the transition process, what are going to happen to the students? Are they going with the new school or switching around? What's going on there? Um, nothing has officially been confirmed. Everything will be confirmed in writing in two weeks. But um, the president of the Elon Homes and Schools for Children intends to give the school in name to a local group of parents, but it will still be the responsibility of this local group to um, own the school and uh, find a new facility and home for the Elon School. 
Oh, gotcha. Now, do they have a place in mind that they're already looking for the new location yet? or? Um, according to Fred Gross, there was no facility that they um, have definitely confirmed will be the new home of the Elon School. But those parents are definitely looking because they believe that it is a good opportunity for the students. And um, the hope is that the faculty will also move with the s students mm -hmm. and with the school. But as is customary of independent high schools, according to Fred Gross, um, the faculty is only in a one-year contract, and so their contract will finish at the end of the academic year, and it is up to the parents and the faculty if they choose to renew the contract and still work with the Elon School wherever the new location may be. Gotcha. Well, that's nice that they get to at least finish up the year. Yes. So, very interesting. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and you'll have to keep us posted in two weeks of what happens if they confirm everything or not. So, I'd love to hear it. Thank you for having me. The upcoming production by Elon's Department of Performing Arts is called She Loves Me. Here to tell us about it is the star of the musical, Adam Kaplan. Hi, Adam. Thanks hey. for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about the show, uh, the summary, what's it about? Sure. Well, She Loves Me was written by Bach and Harnick, um, and they wrote Fiddler on the Roof and Fiorello, but um, this is one of their... Um, less known works, but the music is some of, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, um, it's some of their best, and it's beautiful. Um, it's perfect for Valentine's Day. It's <laughs> about two people who think that they hate each other, but are secretly in love, and are corresponding through a Lonely Hearts Club. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing one of the lovers, so it's a lot of fun. Okay, so tell me about your character a bit. What does he encounter on his journey sure. in the show? My character is George Novak, and he works in a parfumery in um, Hungary, and it takes place in the 1930s, and he's kind of this put together, but little offbeat, quirky kind of guy. That really doesn't make too much sense, <laughs> does it? Um, but that's really what he is. And he is hardworking, um, but he's got this sensitive side to him, and he just starts writing to this girl and falls in love. Um, and you get to see both sides of him, his like snappy and angry <laughs> side, and then his romantic side, and he also has a couple of awkward moments in the show. Mm, that sounds great. Have you enjoyed playing him? And yeah, the it's been a lot of fun. Um, for those of you who saw Hair in the Fall, I played George Berger, so another okay. George. Um, I played Berger, and Berger was a free spirit and crazy, and this is very different. So it's been, it's been a challenge shifting back mm. to a, a musical comedy. Um, I mean, Hair is a lot of fun, but this is something different, and it's, it's, it's been great to have this opportunity as well. Yeah, that sounds terrific. Yeah, no well, nudity in this one. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> well, some beat, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining no us. No problem. It was great hearing from you, and best of luck with the show. Thanks, hope to see you there. Will Brummett is the new student representative for the Pendulum. We sat down with him to get the details on what his position means to the student body. Uh, my name is Will Brummett, uh, and I am now currently the student body representative to the Pendulum Editorial Board. My job is sort of to come and give an outside student's perspective. So I have no background in the newspaper business. Uh, I'm really not good at handling a camera or writing articles, but I am a student, and so I know what it's like. And so I'm just an outside perspective to come and give them feedback on stories, give them different ideas, talk to them about what I've talked to you, the student body, about throughout the week, and then hopefully allowing more voices to be heard at the table. It's not about prestige and it's not about going on to bigger, better things in the newspaper business. My job, my goal is really just to merely be a sounding board for the student body. And so my biggest goal is simply that you all feel, and the student body feels like they can come to me anytime, contact me at wbrummett at elon.edu, and give me any perspective you have. Whether it be you have a different perspective on a story, you felt you weren't represented right, or you really just want to be heard. I really commend the pendulum for coming and saying, hey, we want another perspective in the room. And I think that's the, my biggest role in this whole thing, and I, that's what I really commend them on because a lot of student organizations on campus may or may not always do that. Um, and so I, that's why I'm really excited about coming in, uh, even though I have very little background knowledge, and I'm excited to come contribute from the get-go. Finally, here's Cassandra Cluse with a 90-second rundown of what else you can find in the print edition of The Pendulum and online at elonpendulum.com. Thanks, Brittany. This week in the Pendulum, Colin Aid's residents speak up against classes being held in the building's common rooms. Elon University administration says it's to promote the integration of living and learning, but students say they want the space dedicated solely to recreation. 
President Barack Obama recently presented a proposal that would change the way the federal government delegates financial aid among colleges. Part of the plan would involve rewarding the most affordable schools with more aid for their students and revoking some eligibility from schools unable to cut their costs. Belk Library has extended its circulation desk hours and now students can check out materials anytime the building is open to Phoenix cardholders. The second floor of the library will also remain open 24-7 during the school week. The Student Union Board announced Saturday that Mac Miller and the White Panda will perform at this year's spring show. Student reactions are mixed, but Stubbs said Mac Miller was one of the top choices in this year's survey. The men's basketball team continued its winning streak Monday night with its third victory in a row, defeating Appalachian State 82-59. This is the first time the Phoenix has defeated the Mountaineers since February 2008. And finally, don't forget to check out the Pendulum's editorial to read the organization's thoughts on Greek life involvement. I'm Cassandra Kluse, and this has been the 92nd News Desk. Thanks, Cassandra. For the latest news, multimedia, and podcast, head to our website, elonpendulum.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Until next week, I'm Brittany Lloyd-Jones. Have a great day.